Good morning all. Uh, in my last video, I uh, showed this. It's EC Technologies' latest eight cell power bank. It's got eight uh, lithium ion 18650 cells in here. Um, it's sort of larger capacity than uh, most of these eight cell power banks, which are typically 22400 milliamp hours. This one is 26 800 milliamp hours. And this one, of course, also has quick charge, quick charge 2 and quick charge 3.0. And in that last video, you saw me take this apart. It's very difficult to take apart. It actually requires that you break away this outer ring. And in some ways, that's a good thing because you don't want your power bank falling apart in your handbag, do you? But uh, once I got inside this thing, the circuitry was quite interesting. There are two system on a chip power bank controller chips which i assume do both the input uh, charge control and also the output power control let's just have a quick reminder of those two chips on the circuit board which is up this end i believe uh, no it's at this end because this is where the usb sockets are let's have a quick look at that uh, from the last video um, there's an inductor on the top 2r2 there's also an inductor on the bottom, 1R0. There's a Holtec chip there, which I'm pretty sure is a microcontroller. But there are two very interesting chips on here. And they are this one, the IP5310. But on the other side, there's an IP5318. Uh, now, lots of postulations on that video about why it has those two system on chip uh, power bank controllers. Uh, Con029 says, my guess on using two controllers is that they use two solutions that can be used in standalone power banks to make one power bank that has a QC port and two regular. Um, now, Nuno says, uh, the 5318 is a dedicated QC2, QC3 voltage regulator that can vary the voltage to comply with Qualcomm fast charge. There are two chips, however, uh, I'd agree with you. One chip for 5 volts and the other for 5, 9 and 12 QC port. It makes sense. And I think you might be right, Nuno. Now, also, one of the questions came up, um, which is a common one that's asked, can it discharge and charge at the same time? In other words, can it be used in UPS mode uh, like here? Can you load and charge at the same time? Ice and Willis. Uh, in other words, can it be used as a standalone power source like a UPS? but charged through a solar panel. Well, uh, quite possibly if it's a five volt output type solar panel. And I said, yes, when charging the power bank, the standard output still work, but QC3 is disabled. Uh, and then I said that the uh, the behavior is so complex and mysterious that a follow-up video is called for. Well, this is it. So let's look at some of that behavior. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in um, some of these little, I'm plugging in in the wrong end. Some of these little uh, light units, um, these are going into the standard ports and this one is going into the QC3 port. Um, it doesn't appear to have auto on on any of those ports um, unless of course these just aren't consuming enough current to trigger the auto on. But look, they're flashing. That's a bit weird. Let me lower the blinds. So yes, with the light level a bit lower, you can see that the quick charge 3 output is pulsing uh, or flashing, I suppose, and the uh, standard outputs are kind of more pulsing, but they're doing it at a different rate. So is this a clue? I don't know what these pulses are. Uh, they have to be in excess of about 3 volts, don't they, to light up white LEDs, but they must be very, very short. Maybe there's something to do with um, auto on detection or something like that. I'm not quite sure. But it does look like one chip is controlling the quick charge output and the other chip possibly is controlling the standard outputs. So is that our first clue? Um, let's look at something else. Let's look at the switch on response. I don't know whether you saw that, but the quick charge three output came on before the other ones. Now, if I press and hold, I should be able to get these to go off like that. Let's just try that again. In fact, I'm going to try it again with uh, my welding glass in front so it's not too bright. Let's switch it on. Yeah, the quick charge 3 output comes on before the standard output. So is that another clue? 
that the chips are being used, uh, one for the quick charge and the other one for the standard outputs. Okay, turning our attention to uh, UPS mode, let's see if it will work in UPS mode. So I've got the three outputs uh, on. Let's plug in um, an input uh, charge source on the forward connector. And that's interesting. It's actually disabled the quick charge output, but not the other outputs. So yes, that's basically UPS mode. We've got five volts coming out to these lamps. If I disconnect that connector, it turns the quick charge output back on, but these are unaffected. We ought to take that out, I suppose, just to check that. Plug it in. These continue to uh, provide five volts. Unplug it and they continue to provide five volts. So yes, it does have UPS mode. Now, the interesting thing is, if I put this in the other socket, um, the rear socket, I suppose you could call it, these go slightly dim, which is a bit strange. And if I pull it out of that rear socket, they glitch, they pulse. They actually go off very briefly so yes, it works in a perfect UPS mode on the forward socket, but if you use the rear socket, two things happen. The uh, outputs go dim, and we'll check that uh, with a voltage meter in a minute. And when you unplug the uh, charge source, they pulse off. Now that wouldn't be ideal if you wanted to use this in genuine UPS mode where you've got something fairly critical going on on this output. So yeah, if you want to do UPS mode, use the forward charge input socket. Now that behavior means that the forward uh, socket is, got, is doing something different to the rear socket. So is this perhaps set up so that the forward socket is using one of these system on a chip chips and the rear socket is using another? I mean, I thought initially that these two sockets would just be paralleled up, but actually if you think about it, you can't do that because say we plugged in a separate power bank and I've actually got two power banks here uh, supplying these two cables, if I plug both of these into this power bank, these could be at different voltages. And if they are significantly different, then you're going to get different current draw on each of these two sockets, uh, quite significantly different it could be. And that means that you're not going to get the maximum uh, charge current into this power bank. So these must have two completely separate charge circuits. Now is one coming from the 5310 and the other one the 53. 18 well quite possibly so maybe the two chips are one of these sockets through the chip to one of these outputs like the quick charge another one of these sockets through the other chip to the other outputs these standard outputs now i wanted to take another look at auto on so let's plug this um, usb monitor into the quick charge output and that does come on and that's followed by these two lights coming on so that does seem to trigger the auto on let's turn that off by pressing and holding the on button that's gone off let's see if auto on comes on on these yes that also seems to trigger the auto on so there is an auto on it just doesn't seem to be triggered by these lights alone maybe this has a more i don't know inductive or capacitive uh maybe capacitive actually that could be triggering a high initial current which fires up the auto on circuitry now what i wanted to look at is what happens um, to these outputs. In other words, why do they go dim when I plug a charge source into this rear connector? Let's find out. Well, because they drop to 4.6 volts, which is really strange. If I put um, a charge source in the rear connector, the standard outputs drop to 4.6 volts. If I put that, and there's the glitch actually, when I remove that, um, rearward charge source, you get the glitch and it reboots the uh, USB monitor. Now, if I put the charge source in the forward socket, we don't get that drop to 4.6 volts. So is that because we're using the other chip to charge the cells and they are charging? And again, this is in this UPS mode where you don't get a drop to 4.6 volts and you also don't get a glitch when you pull it out. UPS mode. If you put it in the rear one, you get two side effects. 4.6 volts comes out of the standard outputs. Let's just 
see what uh, the quick charge does in that case. Uh, that hasn't come on at all. Perhaps I can turn it on by pressing that. Oh no, of course the quick charge output is completely disabled when you uh, put in a charge source. So I need to take that out. That turns the quick charge back on. So of course that's irrelevant because that's 5 volts now and it'll be 0 volts when I plug in uh, the charge source to either of these two sockets. The quick charge output is disabled whether you charge from either of these two sockets. Even more mysterious. Now what about the two inputs when the power bank's being charged with those two inputs? Well, I've got 1.2 amps on one of those inputs and just 0.9 amps on the other. But of course, these two power banks have a bewildering array of socketry. Let's just take a look at that. Um, here we have on the top one, iPhone, Samsung tab and iPad. And on the bottom one, we have 5 volts, 2.1 amps and 5 volt, 1 amp. So definitely the 2.1 amps will be supposedly the higher current device. Uh, iPad would probably be the highest of these three. That's what I had these uh, power monitors connected to. So let's do that again. Hmm, that's interesting. I plugged in one of the power monitors, uh, which is now charging the power bank, and the other one has powered up from its output socket with 4.2 volts, presumably through one cable, through this, back out and onto here. That's rather strange. But I wanted to put this in the 2.1 uh, amp output. Let's see what we get now. Um, well, we're not getting any current from there. So perhaps if I take this one out, this one reboots and we're getting uh, one amp. Plug this one back into this power bank. And now we're getting 0.7 amps from there. But can I fiddle with the settings on these uh, monitors to get the full four amps? flowing into this power bank. Well, I put this one into fast charge mode. It's got the ability to change the way it um, manipulates the D plus and D minus lines. You've got fast charge mode, disconnect mode, and USB direct mode. So I put it in fast mode. But maybe this is not the best way from power banks of getting the maximum current. Uh, this should be drawing the maximum current because only one light is showing. So it's pretty much discharged. Um, let's try a mains supply for this side. Right, this seems better. Um, with this mains uh, power multi-output power thing, and this is capable of uh, 14 amps, I think, in total. Let me try and get my camera to focus again. Uh, we now have, going into this power bank, uh, two over 2 amps on uh, this one and 1.75 amps on this one going into the uh, two input sockets of uh, the power bank so that we are at well at least 3.7 probably 3.8 amps or close to that um, not quite the four amps that uh, we're promised but not far off and uh, that has actually risen now a little bit uh, 2.15 amps and 1.8 one amps, that's very close to four amps. And uh, that has resulted in this charging more quickly and we're now on to the second light flashing. So that's really interesting. Uh, we've got two system on chip controller ICs in here, seemingly controlling separately, uh, one being used for the standard outputs and the other being used for the quick charge three output. And we also have these two inputs which uh, my guess is that they separately go into those two separate uh, system on chip ICs and therefore their behavior is different depending on which one of these two you use. Yes it does have UPS mode but the caveats are that you use the forward uh, input socket and only use the standard outputs. Um, so I hope you found that uh, additional information on how this uh, power bank actually operates. Interesting. Um, it uh, does have a, a UPS mode if you uh, stick to the forward input socket and only the standard outputs. It does of course have uh, quick charge 2 and quick charge 3 compatibility on this output. And of course it does have those extra large 
3350 milliamp hour cells. Multiply 3350 by 8 and you get the uh, 26800 milliamp hours rating of the entire power bank. So yes, this is a very interesting new power bank. Cheerio.